Welcome to Bucket of Chum, the Shark Movie Podcast. Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Steve Coates, and you're listening to the Bucket of Chum podcast. So this week, we're talking about Devilfish, a.k.a. Monster Shark, from 1984, directed by Lamberto Bava. Uh, so fun fact about this film, the other shark movie, Sharktopus, is actually loosely based off of this movie. I did not actually realize that before, and I've seen both movies a couple times, so... Yeah, that's pretty cool. But uh, anyways, enough of me blabbering on. Let's fucking dive into this thing. Uh, the title card for the mo- the Blu-ray that I bought actually says Monster Shark. The cover says Devilfish. Title card says Monster Shark. So whatever. Same movie. Uh, opening credits, nothing interesting happens there. Just some dude in old scuba gear feeding turtles and fish or what the fuck ever. Uh, we get a Coast Guard helicopter circling a boat that's just been wrecked uh obviously imply that it's been attacked by this monster shark or devil fish a couple coast guard guys jump out of the helicopter hoist this uh one last survivor out of the water as he's hoisted up we see that he's missing his uh fucking legs i mean it's 1984 so we're not getting any terrible cgi in this movie we're getting real effects which is always a nice time you know i appreciate that then we got to like it's fucking sea world or marine land if you're like me from canada you know, one of those places. We got a woman watching and feeding dolphins. Some guy comes up and asks the girl to show his friends, you know, what the dolphins can do. And they ask her questions about what she does. She says she studies their behavior and captivity and their natural habitat. She's a marine biologist. I don't know why she could just say she's a fucking marine biologist, but that's what she is. She has an associate named Bob Hogan, and he's doing an experiment. So then we cut to Bob on the ship. He's looking at, like, a baby shark because in the middle of the ship, there's like an opening to the water he can reach in so he's looking at baby sharks and anyways he throws it back he goes grabs a beer sits down in the captain's chair underwater there's some device that's beeping uh it's like some sort of sonar he starts working the equipment he puts his headphones in we're back at sea world dolphins are starting acting all weird and then we go back to bob and he looks terrified he says it's coming straight for the boat what's coming straight for the boat well it's the fucking devil fish but he doesn't know that the boat starts rocking Back at SeaWorld, the dolphins are acting up, knocks the woman into the water, and then we cut to the coroner's office, and the body from earlier is laying there covered on the table. <laughs> yeah, we're just, we're, we're away from Bob now. We don't give a shit about Bob, apparently, so we're just, we're in the fucking coroner's office. Two officers walk in and ask about the body. The coroner says it looks like a shark attack, but maybe not. They don't know. The cops want, you know, photographs to figure it out. The cops leave and they meet the dead guy's mom out in the waiting room. She asks to see her son to take him home. The sheriff insists she remembers him as he was and not, you know, all chewed up by a fucking shark. You know, fair enough. (laughs) I think that's a fair point. (laughs) So then we go back to SeaWorld. Bob and the marine biologist Stella are comparing their experiences. So she talks about the dolphins. He said he recorded what he heard earlier, but the recording is empty. So he tried recording whatever noise he heard from the monster shark, and it didn't pick it up. Bob describes the sound as being full of hate. How a fish can fucking sound like it's full of hate, I don't know. But according to Bob, that's what it fucking sounds like. And, you know, they talk about the recording was taken at the same time the dolphins were flipping out. So, like, obviously the two incidences are related. They they speculate that the noise wasn't recorded because the frequency was too high or too low or some shit. Whatever. I don't know about the science behind that. Maybe it's accurate. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, then we cut to Peter and Sandra. Uh, they're working in, like, an electronics store or shop. Peter tells Sandra to take care of the store because he's going away for 10 days, blah, blah, blah. He starts packing up his truck and he's like tying shit down. And then Stella pulls up beside him on a motorcycle saying she needs his help. He's like, ah, no, I'm going on vacation. She's like, oh yeah, that's nice. Hands him a list of shit she needs. He says, it's got to be built to spec. So like he's got to build this thing from fucking scratch, whatever she needs. She says, please. And a little fucking whiny voice. He says it'll take at least a day. She says, ah, you could do it in a few hours, and she says she'll see him later, and then she just fucks off. Like, this guy's going on vacation, and she just hands him some shit, like, yeah, fucking deal with it. See ya. (laughs) Anyways, then we go to West Ocean International. There's a guy in the lab doing some work. His name is Davis, so he's just working on a fucking computer. Uh, This girl comes in, uh, Sonia. She types, I love you, Davis, and then, like, a creepy 
1980s computer voice reads it out. Davis goes up to her and says, Oh, we should be more careful. Someone may intercept the message. Who's intercepting these fucking computer messages? Like, what What the fuck is he talking about? It's nonsense. Uh, Sonia says some shit. It's not likely. Like, her husband is only focused on winning a Nobel Prize, and the other is much too busy to worry about them. I don't know who, like, the other is. Like, we don't really know who they're talking about at this point. They're kind of just talking about people. Then she tells him that she was on a ship collecting plankton for an experiment, I guess. Doesn't really talk too much about it. It doesn't matter anyways. Davis says he heard they found another body and that people don't realize that the WOI deals with genetics, not fish. Like, what? Like, he's complaining about this. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. We'll find out later why this is fucking stupid. And then Sony is like, that and other things. And then they make out. <laughs> so fucking stupid but uh and then like some girl is walking by sees them and then like she kind of walks away and that's it so then we cut back to the electronics store we see sandra and peter are working on stella's list of demands peter basically says he's doing it because of her quote cute little ass <laughs> and sandra's like what's wrong with my ass all lovey-dovey and then they kiss sure why not so then we're in a woman's house. Her name is Florinda. She's the one that caught the other two, Davis and uh, Sonia, making out earlier. She's on a phone with a man. We can't see his face. Um, saying she has an appointment with someone from the Washington Post. You know, she's booked a flight. What they're doing is disgusting and nothing he can do to stop her. You know, of course, we don't find out what exactly they're doing. We're kind of, you know, left hanging there a bit to find out later. And they, you know, he says she better be careful, basically threatening her. And she says, oh, I'm not frightened by you. Then we cut to the cops, and they're showing Bob pictures of the victim, asking for opinions. Bob says he's never seen anything quite like it. He has to hold on to the pictures for further study. And then we're back to Florinda's place. She calls for a taxi. Uh, her doorbell rings. A guy named Miller comes into her apartment and starts attacking her, rips her clothes off, chokes her out. As he does, he's like, ah, croak, croak, as he's sitting there choking her. He carries her naked body into the bathtub, throws in a plugged-in hair dryer, so it looks like she committed suicide, I guess. And then he unplugs the thing. He actually takes the time to rip her panties off, then leaves. So, I mean, he's very good at what he does. He's made it a very convincing crime scene. I will give him that. It's a nice little detail. <laughs> Then we cut to Sandra and Peter doing it. Like, they're in the bed going at it. Peter says some shit like, Oh, you're juicy and tender. <laughs> like, what? Uh, so fucking cheesy. Uh, and then he says, you know, that she's jealous, blah, blah, blah. She plays coy, asking why she should be jealous. Peter says he's not really interested in Stella. Even though, you know, earlier he clearly said, Oh, I'm just doing it because of your cute little ass. Peter hears someone downstairs in the shop room. Uh, Stella's like, Oh no, don't go down there. What are you talking about? He goes down there, and there's a couple of guys in there. They're destroying the equipment that he just finished working on for Stella. They get into a fight. They knock Peter down, and then they fuck off. Sandra comes downstairs, asking what happens. He explains. And then we cut to two guys on a dock, getting into a small boat one guy asks if it's safe the other says not according to the coast guard but soon they'll be telling everyone there are sharks in their bathtubs so these like the coast guard has told these guys that it's not safe to be out there and these assholes are going out there anyways expecting it to be fine sure have at it buddy so they head out uh one guy dives into the water with some scuba gear on he has like a harpoon gun or a spear gun looks like he's going spear fishing or some shit he sees a shark like just a regular ass shark in the water so then he comes back to the surface and then as he does we actually get like a really good close-up of the monster shark mouth that's first like kind of good luckily good at it and again like it's a practical effect so it's really fucking cool i wish we could have seen more of this in the movie like we get some shots later on but i really would have liked to have seen more of it and i actually would have liked to have seen this design in Sharktopus instead of what we did get but we'll talk about Sharktopus one day we'll get there we cut to the coroner lifting uh Florinda's body from the hot tub then the sheriff leaves the house explaining to his uh buddy that it doesn't add up you know she wouldn't have called a taxi if she was going to kill herself so actually for once we have like a somewhat competent fucking cop working in one of these movies that doesn't happen very often so yeah so then we go back to the uh, WOI. The sheriff is informing them of Florinda's death. The sheriff starts to question the three people. So we got Davis, Sonia, 
and this other guy, West, who runs the place. And, you know, they talk about how they're sad that she's dead and whatever, heavily implying that West is behind the murders, but we'll we'll get to that later on. Then a boy and his dog are running down the beach. He comes across uh, the small boat from the two divers earlier. The side of it's been ripped off. The diver is laying on the sand, bloody, missing an arm. And then we go to the hospital. The p- police have arrived there. The man begins to go into shock. The doctor sedates him. This is the man from the boat that was discovered. Oh, no, sorry. This is the man from the beginning of the movie, I believe. The one that was missing the bottom half of his legs. Doctor says they can learn more from the cast of the bite wound from his friend, but it's probably the same shark. Probably. I mean, you know, I don't know what he's going on there. They go down to where the friend's body is. There's a cast of the shark tooth from the bite mark. I don't know how. Like, I don't know how you get, like, a perfect cast of a shark bite or a shark tooth from a bite. It's pretty fucking impressive. Don't think it's possible, but super fucking impressive in this movie. (laughs) So then Peter Bob... Stella and Sander are loading up a boat, trying to get the equipment working that, uh, you know, Peter has made for Stella. Stella asks Peter if the equipment will work. Peter's like, are you kidding me? And then Stella's like, I like the color of your eyes, and then just walks away. I don't know what the point of this interaction was. It, I, I don't know. I don't know. It was stupid, but <laughs> there it is. So then we cut to some cops on the dock telling the fishermen to keep an eye out. They get into the car. Cortez, who is, like, the sheriff's, like, right-hand man, I guess. He says, I hear they have a new waiter with those headlights out to here. (laughs) Okay, great. And then the chief pipes in, a lot of new things in this town. Waitresses, sharks, and a girl who called the taxi before getting electrocuted. Sure, that's one way to connect all those things together. (laughs) Fuck. The guy who killed Florinda watches the cops drive away from a restaurant. So he's keeping you know, tabs on everything that's happening, I guess. So then we go to, to uh, the boat Bob was on earlier, the Seaquarium. The device picks up a signal of a shark. You know, they lose the signal. Uh, Stella gives some fucking backstory on how she met Bob. Whatever, they met at fucking university or some shit. Who cares? They find the shark again, try to record the sound again. Peter says that the signal is so high, it's ruining the recorder, but the shark is coming right at them. And then Peter says, it's not a shark. And Bob doesn't believe him. We see marine life acting all fucking crazy every time they hear the shark noise. Then the shark starts diving. We can see on the screen that they have, and then they lose the signal again. Uh, But this time they manage to record the sound, so they have evidence of it. And then Bob says the only equipment available to identify the thing is at WOI held by West, um, the guy who runs the fucking organization we saw earlier. Then we cut to the hospital, shark attack victim fucking flatlines. And then we're back at the WOI. Uh, Peter and Stella show the sound to West and, you know, the other people that are there. And then West agrees to help them out to help identify the sound, figure out what the hell this thing is. So Bob calls a friend, uh, Janet Bates, which I feel like is a reference to Psycho. Uh, Like Bates Motel and then Janet Lee, you know, played the first girl. Or it's just pure coincidence, I don't know, but it really stuck out to me right away. I'm like, yeah, I feel like this is a psycho reference. But whatever, it's cool, I liked it. So he calls her to fly down, and he might be onto something big, you know, like he thinks it's going to be the discovery of a lifetime. So then we cut to this boat anchored, and there's a couple eating dinner. Uh, They're blabbering on about some shit. The boat gets hit and starts rocking. The wife calls out, but we just hear the husband gargling as he went off to go do shit. So she creeps around, she looks on deck, and she just sees a fucking tentacle slipping over the boat. Then we see the the shark mouth burst through the side of the boat. And then we cut to Janet giving a slideshow. (laughs) Uh, She's giving a slideshow on ancient sharks. Uh, She's examined the cast of the shark tooth, fed the data into a computer, but basically the creature is a living fossil. Like, its DNA is super old or some shit like that. Sheriff Gordon says he doesn't really fucking care. The creature just needs to be killed. But Janet, you know, being a scientist, says they need to study it, so, you know, they want to capture it. But, of course, the sheriff wants to just fucking kill the thing. But Bob says they need to at least attempt to trap it to study it. Uh, Sheriff says if they won't stop it, he will, his own way. And then he just goes away. Uh, So then we get the guy who uh, murdered Florinda. He's at the pool when he approaches Sandra. 
And this is where we learn that Sandra's the one that gave him and his buddy the keys to the electronics store to come in and smash the shit. They had worked out some sort of deal. And she says, you know, that's all she was going to do. And she wants him to fuck off. And he says, oh, no, they're not done yet. So she goes to phone the sheriff, Sheriff Gordon. But he's she's caught right away. And then, you know, it's implied nothing good happens to her. We don't see anything, but, you know, we know. We know. So then we go to Peter and Stella, you know, back on the boat. They're setting up buoys. They set anchor. Peter's got some underwater cameras set up so they can see, you know, things approaching the boat. They spot another boat not too far away from them, and Bob says it's one of West's boat probably spying on them. They're probably after the same creature, so they're not really working together, kind of working against each other, because, you know, he's part of a big corporation, so he's evil. And then Stella notices that buoy number four isn't giving a signal anymore. We cut back to West at the WOI, listening to the shark sound, and then we see on the computer West is looking at some project that the company has called Sea Killer, Information Classified, obviously implying they have something to do with this monster shark that's out on the loose. Peter and Stella take a boat to go collect Buoy 4, see what's wrong with it. It looks like it's been sabotaged, so probably somebody from West's boat came and, you know, fucked with them. Back at the boat, the creature is start showing back up on the monitor. And at this point, Peter's in the water, untangling the boat propeller. Somehow it got tangled. I, I guess I must have passed out at that part. I just didn't see why it got all tangled, but it was. And then Stella is just, like, lounging and, you know... Peter's there fucking untangling the propeller. She's not helping it at all. So then, And then we cut to Bob and Janet are excited about the creature reappearing, but the creature changes direction, and Bob says, Oh, come back, baby. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it's so weird the way he said it, too. Stella fucked off out of the little boat, and she swam to the beach, and then just starts laying in the sand. And then Peter comes running up to her on the beach, and they start making out in the water sure why not (laughs) you know kind of an asshole after he you know told his uh friend sonia that he wasn't interested in her but he is kind of an asshole (laughs) so then back on the boat bob and janet are still tracking the creature yeah it starts to appear on the screen and bob's like look at that a shark with tentacles and then janet's like he's right underneath us and bob's like i know (laughs) he just starts yelling He grabs a gun, he carefully looks around the boat, fucking tentacle comes out of the water, he tries to shoot it, uh, he's pulled into the water. Janet runs towards the edge of the boat with a hatchet, but then she's grabbed at the ankles by a tentacle. Grabs the hatchet and actually manages to attack the creature. So then Stella and Peter are back at the boat, the Seaquarium. They call out, of course, nobody responds. Uh, They see part of the severed tentacle on the ground so they start investigating a little bit they find janet she's fucking hysterical of course then we go to the coast guard and helicopter doing a recon for the creature west is shown by peter and gordon the footage of the creature so we're back at the woi uh west is excited you know that it's a new scientific discovery and again sheriff gordon just wants to kill it peter proposes they reproduce the creature's sound to emulate Uh, a creature that is the same almost like a mating technique i guess and then the computer reads out an analysis of the creature's cells and they say that this thing's only eight months old so there's no way it can be like a prehistoric creature so that's you know adding more to the mystery and also makes sense that they've been implying that this company has been behind the creature this whole time so then we get to peter and stella taking the boat out gordon meets with the coast guard and his plan is to lay out bait with explosives so he's trying to blow this fucking thing up stella and peter prepare to uh, use the mating call coast guard loading explosives so we're kind of like cutting back and forth between these things then the dude who murdered florinda he's on a payphone with west or so we think uh and west is saying again so we think stella and peter need to be stopped by any means and then we get to gordon again and he just learns that sandra has been murdered coast guard starts laying explosives And then we go back to Peter and Stella, scuba diving into the water. Janet's still on the boat, so she's waiting up there. Then the murderer dude, he gets on the boat, and he starts attacking Janet while Peter and Stella are scuba diving. Two guys come at them with knives, and they they start getting into it. Uh, And at this point, the hydrophone, the underwater microphone, has been turned on, basically luring the creature already. 
So Janet runs away. She tries to escape, but then she is shot. Stella gets on the boat as Peter struggles with one of the killers underwater. Another killer approaches trying to shoot Peter, but shoots his cohort with a harpoon gun instead. So that was awesome. I always like it when, you know, the bad guys accidentally kill one of their cohorts. It's always a good time. (laughs) So then the murderer dude finds Stella and holds her at gunpoint, then ties her up. One of the scuba divers is attacked by tentacles. You know, gives Peter a chance to escape. He returns to the boat. He sneaks up on the murderer dude, tackles him into the water. They struggle over a knife as the creature starts to attack, like, all of them. Tentacles everywhere. Everybody's being fucking attacked. (laughs) It pulls Stella into the water while her hands are still tied. Peter stabs at the tentacles, being able to uh, free Stella. And then murderer dude is eaten by the shark. Again, in these parts, like, we don't really see a whole lot of gore or anything, but... I don't know, it's still fun, it's still a good time. And then we, uh, Peter and Stella discover that Janet is dead. And so then we're back with West, and he's doing some shit on the computer. He sees something, and he's like, this is impossible. And then he calls the sheriff's office to tell Gordon that the monster can reproduce itself. So basically any cells that break off of this thing, like any parts, will actually just end up regrowing into another version of itself. Sure, why not? <laughs> So then uh, Gordon and Cortez are in a helicopter. Gordon spouts some shit about winning a gold medal for marksmanship at the academy, and he may be a bit rusty. So basically their plan is to go and destroy all the explosive buoys that they sent out because they realize if they blow this fucking shark up, all the little pieces are going to reproduce into fucking other little sharks and just take over the whole fucking ocean. So he's going out blowing up these buoys as to not blow up the shark. And then back at the WOI, Wes is trying to get access to the Sea Killer project on his computer, but his access keeps getting denied. So this is where we're starting to learn that West may not be entirely responsible for this whole thing, or maybe even at all, considering he's, you know, the lead guy and he can't even get into these fucking project files. We're back at the helicopter, Gordon shoots a buoy, it blows up. Then the helicopter pilot asks what the big shadow underneath them is. It's the monster, obviously. (laughs) Well, I mean, what the fuck else would it be? So they realize it's the creature underneath them. Gordon tries to shoot the buoy before the creature gets to it. The creature approaches the buoy. The buoy explodes, but I think it's shown later that Gordon is able to explode the buoy before the creature actually gets to it. And then we're back to West on his computer, or the computer of exposition, as I like to call it. On the screen, we see Project Sea Killer. Classification, Top Secret. Animal has been programmed to control designated area. Prototype completed. Project originator, D. Davis. Dr. Davis, sorry. So Wes is obviously pissed, so he goes to find Davis. Davis uh, pulls a gun on Wes. They talk about how Wes wouldn't have approved the project, and that Davis believes the future is at sea. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's crazy. It doesn't matter. Any point he makes does not matter because he's a fucking psychopath. (laughs) So he created a monster as fearsome as the white sharks, the octopus, and as smart as a dolphin. And, you know, Wes calls him mad, of course, because, yeah, he's he's fucking nuts. Sonia comes uh, down from the stairs to defend Davis. We now know Davis has been behind this the whole time, along with Sonia. West informs them that within 12 hours, the creature will disintegrate and the sea will be populated with these creatures, but they don't believe them. So obviously this is a side effect from their experiments that they didn't expect, didn't know about, didn't want to happen, but here we are. Sheriff Gordon appears. He shoots at Davis. David shoots at him, misses him. But then we see Davis is shot, like, basically right in the heart. Then uh, as Davis is dying, he says, they'll never be able to destroy my creature. And then he dies like super dramatically terrible dying acting but you know it's entertaining so it's fun uh so then west tells gordon that the creature can be destroyed by fire peter suggests luring it to the surface you know and then you know trying to light it on fire from there it's a bit more of an elaborate plan but that's the gist of it uh they have less than eight hours to do this uh so then gordon you know goes to the beach with a bunch of army guys and coast guard and like they're lugging heavy gas cans around Stella and Peter are on the sea aquarium. You know, Gordon, Gordon and his crew are still getting ready with flamethrowers and shit. Stella and Peter start uh, signaling the creature. So they've got the hydrophone underwater trying to attract it. It begins to follow them to the trap. 
Gordon gets into a Coast Guard helicopter. Peter gets into the smaller boat to lead the creature into the trap. So he's attached a hydrophone to the little boat while Stella drives off in the big boat. And then at the sight of the trap, they start pouring gas into the water and start shooting the flamethrowers at it, getting the you know surface of the water on fire, basically. So Peter's uh, luring the shark into this trap, and he gets snagged on a rock. He jumps out of the boat, and then the creature starts attacking the boat, obviously because he has that fucking hydrophone in the water. Then we see Stella on the sea aquarium bawling her fucking eyes out, you know, because she's scared for Peter or whatever. And then fucking Gordon shows up in the Coast Guard helicopter, lowers a harness, and pulls Peter from the water just in time. And now it's nighttime. So, you know, people go into the boat with their flamethrowers. Gordon calls the boats one by one. You know, they haven't seen anything. We start to see the creature underwater as the boats are driving around. It gets to one boat. Its tentacles grab both the men from the boat and just starts fucking chomping down on them. So they're fucked. Gordon and Peter take a boat. And then, you know, the creature is stalking around the other boats, knocks it over and chomps down on the other people. Peter and Gordon finally see this. Tell the squads to start emptying the gas and start with the flamethrowers and start lighting the creature up. It manages to grab like one or two guys with its tentacles and then it's just bombarded with flamethrowers until it finally dies. So like once this thing pops out of the water, again, we don't really get a great look at it. But you know, again, still definitely a practical effect. Lots of fire. Fire is fun too. It was pretty great that part. I liked it. And yeah, so the creature dies rather quickly i guess like they didn't really drag it out too much which is fine i suppose then we cut to peter packing up his truck again stella pulls up on her motorcycle and then peter is like i'm finally going on my vacation and then stella's like oh where are we going and peter's like to the mountains and then they both laugh and freeze frame and roll credits love the classic freeze frame ending isn't it just fucking great (laughs) uh yeah that was Devil, so that's the plot of Devilfish. Not a lot of gore. I would have liked to have seen more of that. I would have liked to have seen more of the creature. But I mean, as far as like, you know, 1984, so this is still hanging on to the success of Jaws and whatnot. I will say at least they didn't really copy too much of like the Jaws plot, which is what you see in most of these shark movies. Uh, the fact that, you know, it, again, this was 1984, so they had, like, an octopus-shark hybrid thing. That was pretty fucking cool. So, I mean, overall, pretty creative movie and definitely a bit of a palate cleanser, you know, when you're comparing it to things like Shark Exorcist, which I'll never talk about again. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so that was 1984's Devilfish. Uh, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at Bucket of Chum Podcast, and... You can always email me at bucketofchumpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, tell me what you're liking about the show or just it's for no reason. You just want to email me, say hi, say hi. Or same with socials. You can send me messages. Uh, tell me what you're liking about the show. Tell me what you're not liking about the show. Or like I said, if you just want to shoot the shit with me, I'm down for that too. All right. So that's Bucket of Chum for this week, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to Bucket of Chum, the shark movie podcast.